What type of feed do you use and why? Well, we feed hay and then baleage. And more or less, it's because that's what we've always done. The baleage is more or less a new thing, but I quite like it. It's a lot quicker than making hay. And yeah, we try not to buy any feed because that just goes down on the bottom line. If you gotta put money out for feed, you gotta take that out of your profit. Green alfalfa let on the laid on the ground long enough to dry so you could bale it. That's about as it. As long as the baler will pick it up, he'll feed it. Why do you want that? Well, it's low cost. You don't have to take and put it away. And it's about the best feed you can get. It's right off the field. And what makes it so good? Well, it's not lost any of its nutrients less. Alfalfa, you get dry, you knock all the leaves off it. It's got all its leaves. It's at the best stage you can get. So how are you, what's your grazing rotation right now? Right now, we kick the cows out and when we need more grass, we get more grass. And we bring them in when there is no more grass. Are there any specific do's and don'ts to grazing your cattle? For the land's sake? For the land's sake? No. If the cows are turning into dirt, you've got too many on there. That's about it. Keep it so the cattle are, if the cattle are keeping it fed, keeping fed on it, and even that, that's a little shorter than I like to see it, but that field really grows fast. If you pulled the cattle out of there for a week in a good growing weather, you'd be halfway up your boot. Now, I usually try and turn them out on six to eight inch tall grass to start, because otherwise it doesn't have a chance. It's just whole corn that we're grinding up into a chop. It's about as simple as you can get. And at times we fed mixed grain in with it. Good corn for a drought year. Well, I guess I got some feed ground up in the up in the barn there. Corn finds in with it when there's corn finds to be had. And my uncle has a dryer down the road. And we, I guess my great uncle there, he had, him and his son have a dryer. So we get all the corn fines from that and we mix it in and grind it. Good. So what all is that then? That there? Yep. Just corn. Just corn? Yep. And like I say, we'll mix the fines out of the dryer, which we get from nothing, so it's about a win-win. Um, in the past we have put concentrate in, we have them for a few years and it doesn't really seem to hurt the production any. The cattle's getting ready to gain about the same, so. I think I haven't got any numbers on that, I just take no judgment from the time they come in to the time they go out. Okay, so talk about your barn, your basic maintenance. Well this barn, when we've got, when we've got it full up here we clean it out about once a month. The cows usually don't get cleaned out as early as often. But just feed them, bed them. I guess you'd be so we'd be five to ten, about ten pounds a day grain, and all they can eat forage, mainly hay and baleage. And they're fed twice a day in the barn and have a bale out in the yard. So that's, that's about all you need. One thing I will say: make sure you got your damn steers or steers, because otherwise you'll be calving cows out of your fat cattle and sometimes you have good luck last time we had a problem we have we have 11 cow 11 or 12 cows there heifers out of the feedlot and had a hundred percent success other times we've been putting some in the manure pile or hanging them up in the barn because we got nothing else to do with them you're not going to take and make any money by not feeding them a lot of grain you got to feed put the grain to them when they need it when would and they need it? As soon as they come in the feedlot, get them acclimated to it and push them. Don't push them too hard, but push them good enough. Good to a cattle beast, they'll do want hay and grain. How much grain would you put into a beast? That's what I said. In total? Yeah. However many days they're in the feedlot, ten times that by ten pounds a day. That's about what we're feeding. And what about for forage? Just as much as they can eat? As much as forage as we can shove down their 
Good quality forage to put gain on. Do you have an average weight uh, of the forage you're putting in daily? We have no idea. We feed them as much as they'll eat. We'll feed a round bale a day. Well, to um, how many? A round bale a day, anyway. So to that'll be. To how many animals? It all depends how many in for it. Sometimes we got to feed a little more. I think the most we have in here is 30. When we go over the other, over to loot that then I show you the other room we used to finish cattle and we got a lot more. Cut back cows back when BSC hit. And then I guess down here we got some direct so mixed grain that's going to be wrapped here. Well, all this that's standing that we're not gonna, that we're not feeding right away, the way will be wrapped, and it'll take and make more or less a silage. And they do on that. Actually, they eat the mixed grain like it's candy. Talk about this field right here. So this is just all mixed grain put back over wheat. If you got enough time in the year, it's a great way of making a little more forage. We did this the first time last year because we're short on hand. Even a drug year, 15 acres yielded 67 bales, four by fours. And it didn't see rain for the first three weeks it was in the ground. And it still came up. We just want to cut it from just about when the heads are coming out, like now. Get the heads on the wheat, on the oats. This is through the poor end of the field. You see it gets better on up. Which is actually funny, we had cesarium and then there was a grub in the wheat. There was a grub in the wheat and that top end of the field was patchy and down here was the good wheat. But it's the opposite now. I think this has also got a lot of traffic though. Yeah. With the combine up here on the headline. So, so no, we took this wheat off at 21%. Well that's just bean straw. It's as exorbitant as wheat straw and it's we have it, so same as baling corn stalks up for bed. Yeah, that works good then, right? Yeah. Well, really, wheat straw and the pinch you can feed it to fill the cows up. A lot of dairy guys use a lot of wheat straw in their QMRs. Yeah. Um, what's your feeding strategy for each stage of growth? Well, calves, we try and take and get them good enough to go out on grass. And then they're just out on grass all summer, and then they usually come into the feedlot in the fall. But just the grass is where you're going to make your money on cattle because it's pretty well you can figure it's free. Um, and approximately what age do you wean the calves at? It all depends on when they're born in the year. More or less, we take and we went, I'd say our average age would be six months. We try not to wean them any younger now. We want them to be up six, seven weights anyway. Some and smaller calves, but you know what the preg rate is? Pri our pregnancy rate? Yep. Well, I'd say as long as the cow is a calf, it's a hundred percent. Okay, like on average, like how many like miscarriages? Are you miscarriages? Yep. Yeah. In the last two years, I've had one, okay. and that cow went on the truck there mm. right away. She was an old cow. Um, and what is there any difficulties you deal with with your calving? With calving? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the odd time you get a big bull calf that likes to leave his front legs back or something, but I think we've pulled a grand total of three or four calves in the last five years. And most of them have been in accidentally bred heifers, so. And uh, do you use artificial insemination or uh, just the we, natural way? We just use a bull and he's in there all year and he gets, he gets what he wants from them cows.